consider the swamp. It's dangerous and wild, but it's also beautiful. In that sense, the swamp is an appropriate framing for the city that created jazz. I'm heading to New Orleans to explore one of the world's most explosive musical cities. Today, the city exerts a gravitational pull on musicians seeking inspiration. To examine the attraction, I'm meeting the Revivalists, a band that's been a decade building a loyal following in New Orleans before exploding to national notoriety with the 2016 single, Wish I Knew You. It's notable that among the Revivalists' eight members, not one was born in New Orleans. They transplanted individually from all over the country and found each other in 2007. One of the Revivalists' first shows was at Tipitina's, a venue that ultimately came to serve as a sort of home base for the band. What's up, dude? Yo! Hey! hey. 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 Alright, right, so we got a tradition. We gotta give this guy. I gotta touch this guy. Give him a little run. Professor Long here. It's like a food off sort of. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that works. Tell me a little bit about Tipitina's. I know you guys have played here a ton. Tipitina's, this is hallowed ground. This is one of the most quintessential staple music venues of New Orleans. I believe it opened in 1977 as sort of a home base for a local music legend, Professor Longhair. WWOC used to be right up there, which is a real wow. famous radio station, and they would broadcast the shows just with a single mic down just in right the Just right from the stage. Which yeah. is pretty amazing. That like rich history this place has, can you guys kind of feel that when you're performing here? Oh, you smell it. It's really what <laughs> it's it punk. Is. There's bigger clubs in the city, but like to us, it feels like the musical heart mm -hmm. of the city. You got other organs, and they're vital as well. But this this place feels like yeah, it's just it's set. got the heart and the soul. Mid amongst mountains release parties here that kind of yeah. broke you into another level. Do you guys still feel like a New Orleans band? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say we're a New Orleans band. We're a band from New Orleans. We say that out of the respect for right. like the history of all the music that's been Absolutely. here and all the locals that are from here. It's right. definitely influenced us for sure. Obviously, New Orleans is the birthplace of jazz, but like, what is New Orleans music like today? There's been a lot of different types of music here, and it's not always the traditional funk or trad jazz, you know? Yeah. New, Orleans. New Orleans is one of those towns, too, where everybody's good. It's a city of music lovers and a city of people who love to play music. The Revivalists are known for high-energy live performances, so after Tipitina's, I drive across town to find the band's other half practicing in their rehearsal space. Fountain Blue operated as a ritzy hotel throughout the 1970s and 80s, but today, the building serves more utilitarian needs. It's half storage and half music. This is where the Revivalists and other local acts come to work out material. You guys have been rehearsing and writing here since essentially the start of The Revivalists. Is there a reason why you've stuck here for almost, what, 14 years now? It's a community here. There's lots of different kinds of music. There's six floors, like, was like a metal floor when we first started yeah, playing there are, for I've a while. I've never heard so many different kinds of metal when we just walked from the entrance of the floor to our room. The old jazz community, how do they sort of relate to newer, younger bands that are kind of evolving the music scene? What's the relationship like? One thing that really makes the New Orleans scene so great and so important is there's this kind of sense of, of like stewardship and passing yes. the torch and trying to cultivate the next generation. Connecting with the audience, connecting with the other musicians, that's the spirit of New Orleans that like infuses everything here, no matter what it sounds like. It occurs to me that New Orleans feeds its own musical ecosystem, one where musicians and their styles collide frequently, allowing sound to evolve at an accelerated pace. I can't leave the city without a trip to the French Quarter, so I asked revivalist frontman David Shaw to meet me at Preservation Hall, the historic single-room venue just half a block off of Bourbon Street. There, he agrees to play the new single Shaken off of his upcoming solo album. My 
right away you remember me I'm not the same as before You're as bad as you want to be So the less I know the more Don't tell me lies It don't work quite that way Don't tell me lies You can't carry that way Every song tells a story whether it's structured into tight verses and choruses, or it's improvised through saxophone solos that capture the moment and then disappear forever, the effect can be profound. At its best, music does more than just entertain us. It lifts us up and it brings us together. And I noticed the ground was shaking, shaking. Now I'm still standing here. Music is a type of language that communicates struggle and triumph in ways that words alone can't. And New Orleans just happens to have a lot to say. On this road trip, I've seen the country from California to New York. In Tennessee, I explored a music venue inside a cave. And in Mississippi, I visited the birthplace of the blues. Now I'm ending my journey with a renewed sense of reverence for musicians who plunge below the surface, confront the wild and dangerous, and emerge with something that makes us all feel like we're a part of something bigger. With New Orleans behind me, I'm heading back home. Until next time, keep your speakers turned up and your engines revved high. I'm Clint Carter, and this is Common Tread.